by the end of this video, you will have a fully customizable smooth camera system that requires no code. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I have a smooth camera follow system as you can see in the title and that is exactly why you guys are here. So in this video, we're gonna be using a system called Cinemachine. You may see it at the top of my screen already and you will probably not have that if you have never heard of this before. It is very simple to set up, it's very simple to access, it is completely free and it requires absolutely no code. This video is going to be extremely short. That is just how simple this is. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So I'm just gonna show you guys what we're working with. I have a basic cube that can move, but the camera has absolutely no movement. And I know camera movement is something that many, many people have a problem with. Uh, it is a very annoying issue, especially when you wanna pair it with all these different aspects of like uh, your camera, like nice visuals and uh, good looking camera angles etc etc this is a 2d version of Cinemachine but Cinemachine also works with all 3d types of games there is many different ways you can use it and I'm going to show you guys the very basic way to introduce you guys to the world of Cinemachine so without further ado let's jump into it so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go up to window at the top I'm using unity 2019.2 but this works with all above 2018.3 I believe and we're going to go onto window we're going to go down to packet packet package manager and it's going to give you access to all of these add-ons if you go ahead to the advanced tab and make sure show preview packages is ticked or unticked just keep unticking or ticking because it's weird like it says unticked but like it shows more when it's yeah but either tick or untick depending on um whether there's more come up but you basically want to be at the point where more tabs come up um anyway <laughs> so you want to go down to cinemachine out of all of these tabs go down to c and cinemachine my version is 2.3.4 yours may be different but this is the latest version as of to date go ahead and press install it should be down here mine doesn't say that because i already have it installed i just have remove which i'm not going to do it is giving me the option to update but i'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video okay once that is installed you are good to go so the first thing we are going to do we're going to go up to cinemachine which is to the left of window for me at the top and you have all these different cameras the only one that we want is the bottom one that says create 2d camera and instantly a few things are going to change so if we're going to click that and you can see the camera moves slightly don't worry about that uh but yeah so now we have a new thing in the hierarchy it says cm vcam one this is cinemachine virtual camera number one and you can see there is a little icon that appears next to your main camera if we scroll down you can see your camera now has a cinemachine brain this is a script you don't need to worry about this script the reason it says this is because you now your cinemachine camera and your main camera are attached and are one if you see uh when i click on both of these they're the same camera you can't move your main camera left or right you are now in control via the cinemachine camera if we click on our main camera now it's moved and we still can't move it um you can choose to put both of these cameras in a folder for the sake of the video i'm not going to just to make sure i don't overcomplicate anything for you guys but anyway if we go to our cinemachine camera we have a lot of these confusing uh you know slides and stuff like that which seem very confusing but it's super super simple i don't even use some of these i just use the main ones but they all do different things and they make it look super super professional but if you see if we go ahead and press play right now nothing is actually going to happen there is still absolutely no movement we've just got a moving cube which freakishly rotates whenever we hit a corner so if we go ahead and jump back into this you can see we have a few tabs the only one that we care about is the follow tab so this means what is it actually go what is the camera going to follow uh, and obviously in our case that is a player so if you click on this and you drag our player into that follow tab right there and you can see the camera snaps to it instantly by default it has some pretty cool settings which for a lot of 2d games this is absolutely fine okay so now we're going to look at these body settings so if we go to our game you can see there is a purple dead zone this is what this is called so if we change these you can see that this uh kind of goes in and out and same with the y so what the dead zone means is it's really hard to kind of explain it but it's say if we set both of these to 0 0.2 
When you when your player moves left and right or jumps in this vicinity, the camera is not going to move, hence the dead zone. The camera is dead while the target is in this area. So if you see if we move left and right very slightly, the camera doesn't move at all. But if we... Well, the jump don't work because we're still inside the dead zone. But the minute we come out of the dead zone, the camera starts to move. The minute we go back in, the camera starts to move again. But you notice the camera doesn't snap to the middle of the player. Uh, like it doesn't center to the player. It just senses the minute it gets inside the dead zone, the camera stops moving. So, yeah. So we're going to change this settings now so the camera will snap to the middle of the player. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the soft zone all the way to the right so that's the purple right here and now if we press this it's quite similar still uh, still sorry because we need to set the dead zone to completely zero now there will be full movement just like that now you see that zone has gone there is absolutely no dead zone it's going to snap to the center of the player straight away now this is completely down to preference but as a game developer who's developing a 2d game I wouldn't recommend it because obviously I'd have to do a lot of research for 2D games and uh, players may not want the absolute constant movement. I recommend having a dead zone if you're going to use this. I recommend setting it to around what we had, maybe 0.25 I think is a good area of dead zone to have. But again, this is completely down to preference. You can see it doesn't move there. Maybe that's a little bit too much because you want a bit more space there. Maybe if we set it down to 0.1, just like that. And then it allows your player a little bit of space to breathe, but we're still going to be relatively in the center of the screen. And at the same time, the camera looks extremely professional. And alongside all of this, this requires absolutely no code. So it is a really, really fantastic system to use. Um, but that is all from me. That is pretty much the tutorial. You can go around and mess with all of these settings to make sure they do anything you want. You've got extensions. You can use all of these different things to mess with camera shake and colliders and so much different stuff post processing there's so much that you guys can like use with this it's it's quite ridiculous it's such an extensive system it's absolutely fantastic so go ahead and give it an install and if you have any questions about the video go ahead and leave them in the comments if you have any more tutorials you want to see again leave them in the comments as well so i'll thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i will see you guys in the next one bye